Yeah, oh, well, we'll get underway and welcome to the um, Canterbury Civil Defence Emergency Management Joint Committee meeting, Thursday the 30th of May. Welcome you all to our new um, admin and library building. We're very proud of it. And this is, um, yeah, Te, whaka, te Whare Whakateri is what we, um, the building is known as. That's the, the House of Ashburton. So, um, and um, this room is the Hinnie Parker Chamber. And um, Hinnie Parker is a special, um, it was a Māori chief's wife who was um, in this district. And there's a, a matai, matai tree up country, which the original one fell over. This was replanted with a new one. It was obviously a thousand or years more old. And there's a memorial up there with a um, Hinnie Parker a memorial tree up there, which is 20, 30 years old, which will get to be um, many thousands of years or thousands of years too, I presume. So this room's named um, after that. And the naming of our building was gifted by um, our Runanga out of Whenua. So we're pleased with that too. Um, so great. So I might start the meeting with a karakia and Jamie, please. Kia ora tato. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, nō mai haere mai ki te huinga i te rākau uh, whakamarumaru. Uh, e te mare i kura, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, tēnā te mihi kia koe. Um, e ngā korumatua uh, me oku rangatira. Um, um, nō mai haere mai uh, ki, te, ki te rohi o aro whenua. Um, Ānei tō tātou karakia. Uh, whakatakata hau ki te uru, whakatakata hau ki te tonga, kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai, e hi ake ana te atukura, he teo, he huka, he hauhu, ti hei Māori ora. Kia ora tātou. Thank you, Jamie, and um, welcome everybody um, here from Canterbury to this meeting as well, and the spheres are joining us at the table because there's, there's room here. Also staff, and we've got um, one member of the public here too. Um, welcome to you all. So next on the agenda is, and we have Elizabeth Cunningham, Cunningham and Craig Mackay on um, on their teams on the screen. So welcome to you as well. Uh, apologies, I have one from Phil Major and uh, Joe Davis. Hi, right, Dan Gordon for lateness. Thanks, um, Craig. Um, the move that we accept those apologies. Um, Nigel and uh, Elizabeth, all of favour, please say aye. aye. Carried. Thank you. Conflicts of interest. Any conflicts of interest in today's agenda? No. Thank you. Welcome, Mayor yeah, Gordon. There's a seat for you up here and also for your CE as well. Come on up. And welcome to the uh, Chamber. Uh, public forum deputations, petitions, uh, no of none. Extraordinary and urgent business. Is there any? None. Move on to the minutes. Oh, sorry, no notice is a motion. No, no. Now on to the minutes on page 10 of your agenda. And we're looking at matters of accuracy relating to the minutes that were held on the 22nd of February 24th. No matters of accuracy. I'll um, seek someone who would like to move that they're accurate, Murray and Sam. Moved and seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we'll move on. Next item is on page 24. The Canterbury Civil Defence Emergency Management Group Joint Committee Resolution Status Report. It's uh, up, on, yeah, up on the screen. What are we? Um, okay, thanks. Yes. So um, most items are completed. There's just a couple there to be to, to still do. Um, particularly uh, item 8.3, um, point three, that we liaise uh, to nominate a representative uh, from the joint committee to be on our uh, exercise panel. We haven't done that yet. I think there was a conversation after the last meeting because I arrived late. But it was going to be, be, it be John. Yeah, it was John. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. So we can say that's done then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, John. Appreciate that one. And then over the back on page 30, uh, there was a request to have NZTA uh, Waka Kaitati to come and uh, meet with the committee. Uh, haven't progressed that yet, but we'll do that later in the year. 
uh, reason for not doing it quite so quickly is there was also a request that's not recorded to get um, the telecoms, telecommunications grouping to come and talk about the um, reliability, effectiveness of cell phones during or cell towers during power outages. So we'll, we'll get those people to come to the next joint committee meeting. Thank you. Any questions of um, Sam? You can push your button and let me know that you're on the uh, Sam. Uh, uh, Councillor Russell Ellis uh, here. Um, thank you for uh, the report. My question is not really around the um, status of a resolution because it wasn't a resolution as such, but just the management of papers for this meeting. And it's also been a conversation we've had in the management of the papers for the Regional Defence Box Committee meeting um, because we hold these meetings for the general forum. Um, at the moment, all the agendas just continue to be emailed out, and that the reasonably large documents, and they're also um, around the security of the conversations and uh, the document sharing and any updating that needs to happen rather than extra papers being multiple emails. It would be helpful. I think it would be helpful just all handled in the same system that the mail form uses around um, Stella, and it may be that Ethan wants to use a different um, document handling, um, but we use Diligent at our council, I don't, I don't mind what the system is, but it just seems to me, I think as a group, we should move and have our papers handled in a way that's beyond email. So uh, I know it's not here in the resolution, but I've raised it previously, and I'm just wondering where the black place is. Or either that can be just nice and I'll, I'll stop raising it. The group just wants to happen, or can we have action somewhere? Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Sam. And you have raised it before, and um, was a wee conversation going on, but it's obviously come to no conclusion. So perhaps if we formally do it, there will be a conclusion. Um, I'm not sure whether it's civil defence, the road transport, or mayoral um, secretary for the mayoral forum would do it, but someone needs to look at it. Did, did you want to move something, Seb? Then we got it in. Oh, Hamish. Um, Mr. Chair, just before you move something, I just note that ECAN is a mm. So if we were to have a common platform, ECAN would be a question to end up. Um, Stella, yeah. <laughs> But it moved to something that is complementary to us all. So, Sam, if you'd like to. Oops. I just move that the agenda papers for this meeting be handled using a document handling system, not by email. Yeah. But it's, a, it's really an operational decision it, it is. around how it's handled, but that's the direction I'd like to see. But, but it has been sitting around and taking into account the Regional Transport Committee and Mayoral Forum as well. That's right. Thank you. Nigel, see that? Yep. Discussion, John? I understand one of the challenges is with Doc Hander and, and our ECAN system is that we cannot put drafts out in the conversation with chairs or others, and that uh, the system the Merrill Forum utilises has a better functionality in, in shifting papers around for conversations and, and building agendas. So I know it is a live conversation. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be out of line with ECAN if you had the Merrill Forum and, and others sitting on one, but it's I think there's some challenges around how we build documents, set our papers up and the like. So I do believe you are still a live conversation. Yeah, yeah, let's let's have the conversation and then and, and put it to bed. So the motion's there, moved and seconded. Yeah. I'll put it all in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried, thank you. Get action out of that. Um so then we're back on to eight point one, the report. There's a recommendation there that notes the status of the previous resolutions provided on the civil defence. CDM Joint Committee Resolution Status Report, May 24. Move for that, please. John, and a second at Sam. All in, all in favour, please say Very, thank you. Next item is 8.2. This is the keg update. Uh, this will. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, um, it's a summary report that we thought would be useful for Joint Committee to include just in terms of the discussions that were held at, at KEG. Um, the reason that we've put it up front is obviously it helps um, to pre-read that before you read some of the papers in terms of where the discussions at KEG went to. Um, we've also tried to look at uh, streamlining the agenda so that in more information papers can just be collated together and moved in one one section but are still there for, for being read. So. Um, very happy to keep doing this if it's something that um, Joint Committee feels there's, there's benefit in doing, just to summarise where we've, where we've got to for a keg. Any questions of all? I know <clears throat> maybe we had a, slight, a small discussion about when keg meets and then this group meets, 
and a lot of the meetings are the same. Is there, and do we progress a way of perhaps combining the two if we're allowed to be more efficient? And is that progressed at all? Do we pack it too hard, basket? I think we haven't really progressed it because they are sort of legislated different meetings. Um, but what Will's proposed here is a way of certainly streamlining so there's less duplication of papers coming to both. Um, and, and we'll continue to work on how we do do the streamlining and not the different papers and how we do. If we've got the idea who can change the legislation through the Minister of Civil Defence, perhaps he is coming to meet with us on June the 13th. Um, perhaps it's worth raising that we've got these two meetings going on, taking up a lot of time when it could be one meeting, perhaps worth investigating, I think. Um, Murray. Thank you. What are we doing now? Leave it? <coughs> yep, we're fine. Thank you. Um, just in the first one actually is in page 41 of the report, Welfare and Response in the Induction Pack. And I just noticed the last bullet point. There's just a small typo there that you might need to fix. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be integrate right in front of that word. Yep, so we can fix that. And I also just, if I may go over the page then and look at the welfare framework, I'm sure there'll be a, um, a rational understanding around that, but I just um, Mark, Murray I might hold you there. We're not quite up to that stage of the agenda yet. Okay. We're, we're still um, getting sort of going through the um, joint committee report from Key. But we okay. could um, get. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. good. So carry on. Carry on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So I just wanted one to understand in the framework on page forty-two when we're talking about children and young people, um, and ensuring the needs of young people are considered. And I'm guessing through Aranga Tamariki, and I, I just wondered in the event of um, the welfare framework, there could be a lot of children, young people impacted that actually may not be in the Aranga Tamariki system. So I, I just didn't know why we were going to be excluding, you know, community or families and communities that actually aren't already in an Aranga Tamariki. So I, I just would, I just want to know the the rationale and if there was any. Consideration to right. you get my draft. Sure, I think I can cover that off. So, um, children, the, the the responsible government agency for making sure that children and young persons are locked after is Aranga Tamariki, but we know there are other organisations like Red Cross and all sorts that also lock after them. Um, so this is just from the, I suppose, the legal framework of who has actual legal responsibility. So if, if you know, if in the event of a uh, a, a parent being missing or the death of a parent, um, legally, our Ronga Tamariki have to take over and do that. But they might use Red Cross, there might be other steps on the way, but they're the legal entity that has to look after them. Yeah. So it doesn't exclude other people. Okay. I guess from my mind, it, it feels as if there is a piece missing for the other people, if you like, you know? Sure. Yeah. So I. I yeah, I just wanted to be certain that we weren't going to lose sight of no, everybody that needs assistance. To we don't. De we definitely don't lose sight of that. I mean, even you know, even police have a role when it comes to this. You know, yeah. the the main thing is that when we're looking after young children who are not supervised, is that we are putting are leaving them with the right people. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a challenge, but we've got to do it right. Yeah, and I totally understand yeah. that aspect. So thank you. Further questions. It's that one on page 63 is around animal welfare. And I know with our floods, um, lifestyle blocks appeared and they seem to fall between the cracks of MPI and um, and are we um, the needs that they have when we have an event on? Are they looked after through this process, um, through this paper? Um, better than what they were, have been. We're certainly acknowledged through this, and the rural advisory group has been working on, um, particularly uh, at this stage, education packages for lifestyle blocks. So that's um, can't can't recall exactly where we're up to with that, but I know that it's um, there uh, signed off. But as far as how it's been distributed, I, I can't comment at all. I'm not sure. Um, we haven't resolved. Uh, what agency is going to look after them? Uh, MPI 
are the responsible agency. We know they don't have capacity to do it, so it then falls back onto other organisations, uh, and that still needs more work to clarify. On page 42, it's got the welfare subfunctions, and under animal welfare, it's got MPI, which is right. So and I was just thinking the Rural Support Trust and um, and even federal farmers might fit in there. Yeah, yeah. I know they're not a statutory body, but... Yeah. These, going back to that 42 page, which Murray, this questions you had, all of the agencies listed here are the, are the sort of the primary agency who are responsible for those subfunctions. They're not the only ones that deliver it. So all the, yeah. all the other people that yeah. support them are not listed here um, on page 42, but Real Advisory Group, Federated Farmers, etc., are a real, under real important component to the animal welfare department. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, just a, a wee bit sideways on it. Uh, in our uh, long-term plan deliberations, we did add that sixty thousand dollars that was requested for RAG into the UAG for civil defence. So it's sideways, but it's, it's, it's part of this conversation as well. So at this point, it is simply nothing. Any other <coughs> questions? If not, there's a recommendation there that we received this evening. Key Chair's report. Dan Munro and Murray Black moved and seconded. All in favour, please say. Carried. Thank you. We voted 8.3, which is page 77. James, Civil Defence Emergency Management Group Joint Committee report. Thank you. Um, I've sort of pulled together a few things here that have been. Um, been, been presented in the last couple of joint committee meetings around work programming and responding to the KPMG review. Um, so the first there is KPMG, that's the um, CAG and joint committee reporting schedule. And I've got a, a table um, following the report, attachment 8.3.1, page 69, just going through there. There are, there are some that we're delaying a little bit. Um, and it's just due to work pressures and other 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 um, priorities coming up, um, but they're all still on. Well, they'll still will be presented to CAG and Joint Committee over the coming year. The only one that's probably of concern, well, not of concern, but we are, we we I'm I'm going to sort of delay responding to you is that last one, the joint, the regional joint operating concept, which was in the KPMG review. And we actually need to do a bit of work to actually unpick actually what it means. It was you know, written by KPMG and um, myself and my team haven't really worked out exactly what they meant by it. So we'll unpack that first and then still come back to you with what we're going to do about it. By next meeting? Yeah. Uh, maybe not by next meeting, but certainly we, we won't forget it. So it will still be covered. But yeah, um, at some stage, once we've gone through the KPMG report and sort of finished it off, we will we will do a close off of it. Um, the other bits I think I will actually end up talking to. So, from the meeting schedule, the roles and responsibilities piece of work, um, you know, we agreed uh, previously that we wouldn't change our structures uh, here in Canterbury. Um, but getting a better understanding of roles and responsibilities would be a useful project or a useful task to do. That's underway. The CAG agreed to it and we've already started on the work. Um, we have used the Atar some Otago material as a starting point. However, we will also include Manafenua slash or Manafenua Naitahu as a component in there. So it's actually going to have four columns. There will be the territorial authorities, roles and responsibilities, um, the group office roles and responsibilities, environment Canterbury as the administrating authorities' responsibilities, and then Mana Whenua. Um, and so we've already got work underway to do that. The Targo also had a, um, actually a contract or an agreement in place. Through the KEG, we felt that that would be better to actually just be an MOU. Um, so the Otago, the Otago contract is there for an example to look at. But we will look more for an MOU rather than a, 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 a contract slash agreement. I'd like to think that I'll be able to bring that to the joint committee at NXME. Just a, a version for you to, 
debate and hopefully get very close to signing off. Um, and then following on from that, the work program, um, we have done some work on the group work program and I've included that as an attachment. Um, it's at a very high level, but the, the thing to note with that at the back of it, um, we have got some projects that were sort of put on the back burner, put on hold, um, just due to capability. And Ed asked me to do a wee bit of a risk analysis on those ones as to what it means. I haven't done that yet, but in a future meeting, I will come back with that risk assessment around not doing those projects or holding off on them. Um, once that roles and responsibilities works signed off, uh, we'll then start working on what the group pro group work program, not the group office, but the group program box like, uh, and that will include partner agencies when we get to doing that one. I'm happy to take any questions on that. What do you anticipate practical difference between a contract and a I think an MOU is more around just acknowledging that this is where we want to work, but acknowledging that we're not going to be um, bound to it. We've got some I think that's the that's strong. I would also I also think that after we've developed the roles and responsibilities document. It needs to be a living document. We should actually refresh it quite often rather than being one of those documents that bookcase always on it. Um, we know that you know, things change and it needs to change with them. The questions? Oh, there's um, four recommendations there. Do you want to take them as one or take them individually? Virtually in one. Put them as one, so not to move. All right. Nigel, no, but Nigel, go on. Discussion, right. No, ten. Right, right. He's got a lot of. Have <laughs> <laughs> you broken it? <laughs> no, that's like <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I'll go put the motion all those in favor, please. Sorry, Carrie, thank you. That's, that's all right, then. <laughs> 8.4 recovery plan update and uh, welcome Richard. Kia ora koutou. Um, this report's really got two parts. The, the, the main part of, from my perspective is highlighting the current state of readiness for recovery, uh, which as I think you will know because I've been around your councils and, and told you in those meetings, it, it, it's poor, it's not that unusual in New Zealand, so we're, we're not uh, particularly out of, out of step. But importantly also is a work program intended to raise that level of readiness. And I, I guess the, the, the key message I have is there's no room for complacency as we've seen from uh, reports such as in the North Island. Um, individual councils, I think, are, are fine to respond to smaller events as you get large events, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, both individually and actually at group level. And we, we, we've seen that. So the intention is to um, work to enhance our readiness so that we can uh, better um, recover. The second component of it is uh, bringing back to you uh, an item that was discussed last time. And, and uh, last time uh, it was called a recovery advisory board. Uh, this time we're, we are referring to it as a recovery advisory panel. And I guess what I heard last time was a concern that um, this group would be undermining the authority of, of the committee or your individual councils. And the intention 
uh, in bringing it back to you, I, I want to reassure you that that's not the case. The intention is that in a, uh, a, a any major crisis, it's good to have as many friends as you can get to to help you uh, respond to it and generate ideas. And and that's really what this recovery advisory. I, and I'm now calling it a panel rather than a board to make that distinction uh, away from governance. Um, and so in addition to that, changing the name, emphasising that it's not a decision making body, it's an advisory body. Uh, and also putting it back so that it reports to me as part of management rather than um, as, as part of governance. So, so that's the intent. It's intended to augment our capacity and capability uh, to advise and uh, get the best possible recovery that we can. So I'll leave it there. I'm happy to answer questions. So I was surprised we were um, as poor as what we are, and really does actually, for having a couple of um, events which seem to go quite well. Yeah, look, I think the, the, the point is in, in terms of readiness for recovery, it's, this is talking about big events. So even something like the 2021 floods and, and the discussions I've been having, uh, particularly with my counterparts nationally, we would even describe that as a moderate event. Something like uh, this, the North Island severe weather events, let's call it large, Christchurch earthquakes, perhaps severe, and then something like Hakurangi, would be as a catastrophic. So there's quite a, a number of levels above it. So I, I think you know, even in the moderate size event, we're, we're probably fine. It's when you get into those um, levels further up that um, our, our readiness really gets tested. Thanks, Richard. I suppose we can always learn and do better as we go. We'll never probably get to the top, but there's always something to learn and do. Yeah, always. Um, any questions or Richard further? Um, Jim. Yeah, thank you. I mean, thanks for the report, and I think it's really important um, work that's been done to identify um, some areas where we need to improve. So support the recommendations uh, that are there, and yeah, look forward to seeing improvement. I think it happens over time, but you know, let's continue to do that. And thanks for the key work that's gone and behind to support that to the state. So. Yeah, Dan. Um, likewise, I support it for this because it wasn't last time we saw it subverting the effectiveness and authority of premiers. And I would never want to be, uh, in a t having been through these events as we all have, having us connected and being a bit, and being briefed through this time and being stood up in order to support each other, I think is really important. We are the ones the media go to, uh, and we need to be over that detail. I don't have a problem with an advisory panel the last proposal um, certainly uh, looked to be that. So thank you for picking it up um, because I think it's an important distinction and um, to always remember that, you know, as the elected representatives of our council, we can always be called together at short notice and we'll always be available in order to make sure our areas are, are looked after and that we're supporting our colleagues no matter where they are in the region. With questions, Mary. Sorry, thank you. Um, yeah, I think in on principle, I think it's a really you know sound um, option for us to consider. Given that we're talking about a regional and national scale disaster, uh, uh, the and I just look at number bullet point twenty one where we look at the indicative membership. Is that likely to be um, convened? Well ahead of any regional or national um, events, so that those groups can just be, or those per that personnel can be pulled together to actually manage that project. I just want to understand the timing. I guess um, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, ideally, yes, and and, and so um, the the structure in recovery is a little bit different from the response structure, and that we have. Um, what we call recovery environment groups, looking at economic, social, built and natural. Um, and ideally, actually identifying the members of those groups as well, as well as this group, 
and, and bring them into exercises so that we can actually be figuring out how we work together. Right. So I'd like to move the recommendation we have in front of us. There's three of them there. If we take all three together, if you wish, or individually. Is that Craig? Craig Mackle? Moved and seconded uh, Sam. Any speakers for or against? Not put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against carried. Thank you. Move over next to <coughs> page 112. Uh, emergency management legislated appointments. James. Just one appointment this time round. Um, Helen White from Christchurch City Council being appointed as a local controller. Um, Christchurch City Council nominated her through the through their council, then Keg, and then through the Do. Um, Helen's just completed her um, two day basic controller training, and I expect her to go on to do further things. But she's done done the minimum that she needs to do to be a controller. Um, and there's a bit of a blurb there about her experience, so I'm happy to to put forward that uh, I recommend to you that she's appointed. Thanks, James. And looks like she does have some experience there reading the, the blurb. Uh, so I'd like to move, Craig, um, Nigel, and John Sunkle. Move to second. That all in favour, please say aye. Carried. Thank you. Nima updated and um, Rochelle. Welcome. Page 113. Hello, Kalawa. Uh, nice to see you all. So I will take the report as read. Um, however, I will just speak to a couple of points. Um, firstly, the emergency management bill. Um, you'll all be aware that that has been withdrawn. However, there is an intention that a new bill will go before Cabinet um, by the end of December 2025, so uh, end of next year. And in response to the government inquiry to the North Island severe weather events, um, uh, DPMC is leading the response to that. Uh, James may have more to speak to that in his update later. However, um, I can say that there is a paper going to Cabinet for the, in the first week of June with a proposed roadmap. And then the hope is at the end of August, start of September, another paper will go forward with investment decisions. So um, quite short timeframes um, in the response to that, um, and we'll just see see how that plays out. And I think just acknowledging that at this stage, all of the inquiries present recommendations and no decisions have been made other than to withdraw the bill. Um, and over and above that, the review of reviews that is underway and being led uh, internally by NEMA, the hope there is that that will be completed early July this year, so not too far away. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has any. Thanks for the update, Rochelle. Um, questions? Yes. Go on. With the previous bill, we we sort of had the the bill put before us, and we had the opportunity for a conversation, and in uh, one or two conversations with the minister, and they were quite tense and challenging, but we cleared a lot of air in that process. With the speed that this new bill might be coming through in its process, is there or can there be made an opportunity for, for mayors and groups through the country to, to have some of that conversation with the minister and others to try and speed the process up or, or clear the decks a wee bit of the stuff we don't like? It's How do we get into that conversation and not just be stuck with the select committee process where things are kind of done deals or, or whatever? Yeah. And I'm, I'm more than happy to, to take that back and share that through and completely acknowledge what you're saying. And my hope is that there will be engagement through that process. Um, and I do believe that you will be meeting with the minister as well on the 13th of June. So I um, suggest that there's an opportunity to raise that then as well, but more, more than happy to. Um, and I think, like I said, I, we don't have a lot of visibility yet around what that's going to look like and what that process for engagement will look like and, and even what the bill will look like or how that will be drawn up. So, yeah, as, as that comes um, to hand, we can share that. But I'm definitely happy to push back um, just that keenness for engagement and prior engagement and robust conversations. So I think the, the, the earlier the opportunity, uh, the 60-something mayors of, of New Zealand uh, are alpha-type people and, and have a view of the world. So to have that early conversation is just, I think, critically important. Uh, the, yeah, so this visibility as soon as possible. Yeah, no, thank you. And I will pass that on. Yeah, I think it's, it's vitally important that we're in the front back. 
seen what happens over the last few years when we get involved at the end. It doesn't end wisely for some people. <laughs> Generally not us. <laughs> but um, yeah, glad you take that point up. And we'll take it up to the Minister as well. Thank you. Um, anything further? Questions, Dr. Chell? No, there's a recommendation there that we um, receive the NEMA update. Someone like to move? Dan, Murray, Vic, Waterford, PCI, Harold. Next item is 8.7, Te Rurunganga o Nakahu um, update. Jamie, welcome. Oh, given so, so, uh, apologies, I don't have my glasses, so I'm um, enlarging this to about 250%. So, <laughs> so I think, I think uh, Oliver down the back there can read this, so I'll have my. Um, but anyway, uh, just to just to pass on a few things that uh, we mentioned uh, at CAD, um, we, we have uh, started two mana whenua emergency roles, and uh, as of last week, they actually had their first governance meetings with their uh, local runaka, and um, and so between Te Runanga, uh group and um, and mana whenua, they've been able to slowly work through. Uh, some uh, uh, KPIs um, moving forward, which which they'll be sharing with us, and it's a it's a good uh, model for us moving forward and how we would like to see uh, eventually the Canterbury positions, um, and in and around that. Uh, so um, uh, Elizabeth and I will will uh, touch base with you, James, and just to, just to continue that conversation because it's been a good model so far from what we've heard. Uh, but uh, there's a few logistics as to, uh, from our perspective, as to who holds the contract. Um, and that's something that uh, Elizabeth and I will talk to you. Um, we, I, I did also mention that with one of the roles, uh, particularly in Southland, we were a bit concerned about the change that was happening down there and, that, and whether that process would be smooth. But I'm under the understanding that uh, Lucy and um, Te Ao Marama, our environmental entity, are uh, working, working through that. At the moment, uh, the second thing was around um, uh, just to show our appreciation to, uh, to um, group and assisting us and, and assisting to do Nungo Naitahu with our Aru Whenua planning. Um, our, that's that's been really good, and we've also taken that a step further and uh, also working alongside Te Puni Kokiri, um, had an exercise uh, with them. They were uh, very supportive for us during the uh, the Canterbury floods of um 20 what was that 2021 um and uh um, they're very keen to help and support with us um in particular uh it was very interesting hearing how uh they were in a position to support uh during cyclone gabriel uh but uh um due to various bureaucracy um issues that they had they were only able to support maybe two or three weeks uh, later than what they were hoping to do. So we were hoping to iron out some of these things so that if AFA does happen, um, then we'll, we'll have um, hopefully quicker support for mana whenua uh, with that. Um, and also, sorry, uh, uh, Rochelle, Nima, um, also need to get uh, Natukuroa and Dean to get in contact with us because they've gone missing uh, over the last couple of weeks. So we need to pass that on if you'd be so kind. And then finally, um, I also mentioned around um, our emergency pod contract. Uh, so they'll be rolling out. Um, they'll, uh, they'll be rolling out, and we expect them all to be completed by August. And uh, with the first ones being the West Coast, and we were hoping to coincide uh, a, uh, an, a an an e pod um, opening when the minister was down. But um, I wasn't sure if he was coming on the thirteenth of June, but. Um, it may be a bit rushed, so we might actually have to look at inviting him at another time um, because we'd uh, like to share that process not only with um, with group but also nationally as well. So um, that's from myself. Uh, oh, Elizabeth, was there anything you'd like to add? Or are you happy with that? I, I am happy. I just wrote also I'd like to tell the Kai Whakahari or the chair that uh, our Tarunango Ngaitahu group now reports to the board and uh, it's, uh, I think it's every six months we're likely to make it. So I just want to assure you all that Te Runango Ngaitahu is taking a close watch on what we're doing as far as civil defence and emergency goes. And thank you, Jamie, for providing that report. OK, kia ora. Thanks, Elizabeth, and thanks, Jamie. Any questions for Jamie? 
Elizabeth. Oh, sorry. Sorry to hog the fine the, the limelight. Sure. We we're just going through our regional policy <coughs> statement discussions and and the like and uh, real influence uh, influence of Titariti and and our responsibilities. So it's a question you may or may not want to answer, Liz or. Um, Jamie, how, how do you feel your relationship with this committee sits and feels? Uh, is it constructive and working well? I'm just, I'm just interested. You, you may choose not to answer. Uh, ja ja Jamie can talk from an operational uh, perspective. I mean, it's only been a short while that one has been on uh, the council. Uh, uh, sorry, has been on this council with a number of other people like the police, like others. But I have to say, jointly with all of us being together, we proved ourselves just recently, uh, especially over the fires in Canterbury. So at a, at, a, at a council level, I feel that we are working well together. It's uh, the operational level that perhaps Jamie and I could talk to you off camera, if you like. Um, John? Uh, I don't. I, I have had feedback about what's happening as far as uh, ECAN goes in the regional policy statement, and I prefer not to uh, talk to that at the moment, given that um, I've only just heard about it. I was only using that as an example of collaboration. I was just. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see. I don't want we'll to talk see. about it either. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point I'm making, I, I have been on this committee as. Well, I don't necessarily have the vote, but I've never been told not to vote and I've never been told not to a question or answer as far as the, the chairperson goes or the councillors go. So in, in terms of collaboration at this level and with this group of mayors, I felt um, that these relationships are very important and they should keep going. Yeah, and we welcome your input as well. Yeah. Thank you. Jamie? Uh, I'd just like to say from an operational point of view, uh, there's been a number of firsts um, that, that have happened. And, and just an example, uh, we attended C10 with not only not only uh, members of the Fano and Emergency Response Team, uh, but also we included uh, our Ngaitahu Holdings um, Emergency Team, which is developing through Ngaitahu Tourism, and then we hope to extend that. So we're building up our capability and, we can, and we're only doing that with the relationships um, with you inviting us to the table, sharing sharing with us um, your knowledge and um, and and just having you having you involved in a lot of our day to day work, um, and so being able to share this stuff with you, getting your impact, uh, getting, getting your opinions and um, on on that has just been just been really valuable for us. So um, so I just want to thank you for that. And and Elizabeth was is more than. Um, uh, more than more than qualified to be able to make the decisions on behalf, so I don't have to do anything or vote for anything important. So kia ora. Questions? There's a recommendation there. Just before I go to Jamie, you mentioned the floods of 2021, three years to the day. There was a full on here in Ashford. She was still pouring down. If you have to remember back, it um, was all on here three years to the day. So um, there's a recommendation there that we receive the verbal update on CDM matters from Te Rungaunga o Naitahu. The um, mover, Murray, Craig, Old Rally. Seconded, all in favour, you can say aye. Aye. Get carried, thank you. Uh, next, 8.8, .8, the financial report. James. Thank you. Um, report's very much the same as the second quarter. There is the... Um, Still, that current overspend mainly due to the KPMG review, um, but also uh, there's a little bit extra through the Port Hills of recent fire. Um, but as expected, the reserve will drop, but is expected to be on and there is 700k as currently agreed. So, happy to take any questions on that. Questions on the financial report? So, you think by the end of the year it'll be back? It'll still be, it'll, it will be on on budget for the reserve. Um, we won't won't be we certainly won't be significantly overspent. Yep. Questions? Recommendation there. I'll move it. Seeing that. 
Watch your phone. Well, fair piece of height. There it is. Next item is sign <coughs> report from the group controller. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, um, it's been a while since we last met and we've <laughs> had the portals fire in between that. So, just wanted to acknowledge that we had that fire. Um, Fact that it you know ended up covering around about seven hundred acres of sorry hectares of land, um, and and basically burning over that same land same area that got burnt in twenty seventeen. Um, response to the fire uh, was um, much better from a multi agency coordination point of view. The lessons learned out of twenty seventeen have been applied, and I've just got a report from a draft report from Resilient Orgs who did a review for us, but I'll, I'll still need to just do some technical corrections in it. But once that's done, I'll share it with the joint committee at our next meeting. Um, there's no, no surprises in the learning, um, just that continuous improvement around with how we do our public information management um, and how as multi-agencies, we, we sort of communicate and work with each other. But, we are seeing that we are, we are learning. Um, we also had a West Coast rain warning um, at the 9th of April. Once again, we had a number of Canterbury uh, trollers and response team people and some other EOC staff uh, attend to that to support the West Coast. Uh, in the end, it didn't be, end up being as significant as predicted. Um, but there was still a number of landslips and state highway six, isn't it? Was was cut off for a period of time. Uh, exercise Rufina. This is the national exercise looking at AF8. Um, it's it's underway. Um, the role for us um, as a region is relatively small. On the day of the twelfth, uh, it's more about putting big problems up to NEMA and to the National Crisis Management Centre. Uh, and those big problems we have gained through a series of workshops with all councils. In fact, the last, last workshops uh, tomorrow with Karanui. So those, those workshops have been very, very valuable. And um, I want to acknowledge and thank you and your chief executives and the staff that attended because um, we are getting valuable um, information out of those workshops. So thank you. Um, we held, held, have recently held a controllers forum and training. Um, uh, the forum was um, unfortunately not well attended. We had a number of people drop off uh, in the two days prior to it. I did raise it with the keg that you know it's, it's unfortunate when you do um getting guest speakers and paying for catering. That doesn't always work out. I understand that other things get in the way, but just just encourage staff, Pacific controllers to attend these things. We had Joe Malcolm come in and talk, and she's a very good um, speaker around uh, public information management. And uh, recently a two-day controllers course that was also um, in, um, well delivered well received, and it was great to catch up with some of our new, new controllers at that one. Uh, moving on to um, to common operating picture, but KPMG recommended that we start to adopt a common operating picture. This is also a common theme throughout the more severe weather event um, inquiry, plus going all back to even the 2017 um, government tag review about this. Um, but in the KPMG review, they talked more about a common operating picture that we can use to aid for planning and uh, in readiness, not so much for as a response tool. And uh, a start, uh, well, it's not a startup company anymore, but a company that's been developing a product called the Urban Explorer um, from um, Urban Intelligence might be a tool we can use. So some of our councils are already using that for their climate change adaptation work, uh, and some are using it to do their risk modelling. Um, I think it's actually probably one of those tools that 
um, sit a little bit outside of the joint committee and might actually sit better with the mayoral forum because of the versatility of the product itself, not just being a CDM thing. Um, so I'm keen to do further work with Environment Canterbury and any of you, if you're interested, around um, getting a presentation to the mayoral forum with an explorer as an option. Um, how we um, use geographical information systems to do more planning. And uh, reports on to the North Island severe weather event. Um, we recently saw the government inquiry come out, the Jerry Matter for Iowa one. There's 14 recommendations in there. Um, the group group managers have a regional special interest group. So last week I spent three days in Wellington working with all the other CDM group managers on a group manager's response to those 14 recommendations. And I've got a presentation that I would like to deliver to you and the chief executives. I'm thinking about, um, Michelle's already talked about some very quick timeframes for responding to, to government around the inquiries. Um, but I'd like to present to you perhaps on the Friday the 7th of June, so next Friday. I know that won't work for everybody. Um, on the presentation that the group managers gave them, gave the minister, and look, there will be some things in there that will be different from perspectives. But with the minister visiting on the 13th, I think this is a good way of fishing out what some of your. Um, so just talking with Neil before the seventh works for him during the afternoon, or the 10th, sort of at 4:30, 5 o'clock, as a early late afternoon, early evening. Maybe just want to check your diaries now and see if it works whichever day. This either, month, either this Friday, this, which this is a, sort of next week. It's a week, real quick. Sorry, it's quick. I know it's not going to work for everybody, but James, I think it'll take me an hour. Is it on team? Is it team? Yeah. Your lounge there. How's it, how are you looking? Teams, yeah, teams. Um, was it Friday or Monday? Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday afternoon. Um, I'm happy to lock at times that suit or, or Monday early evening. So Monday's out, then it'll be Friday. Friday working. Um, it does or doesn't? Five o'clock, would that suit? Thanks time, but thanks time. <laughs> Friday morning, you say nine o'clock. Would that work for you, Mary? If you're in Wellington, so I think nine might work. Okay, I I will record it anyway, so I'll make that recording available. Yeah, so nine o'clock. So nine o'clock Friday. Right, teams. Thank you. Very much. Um, the only other comment I've really got, well, um, Rochelle sort of alluded to the fact, well, DPMC are doing this. They've got a roadmap that's already going to Cabinet um, very shortly. Um, there is going to be the um, investment plan at the end of August. I understand that DPMC uh, will engage with chief executives and mayors across the country, but I've got no visibility of timeframes or how. I think one of our best options is actually through that mayoral forum meeting on the 13th. So, but, you know, as I know more, I will certainly let you know. Um, sorry, test. Uh, and just, just to put out there that, you know, with the reviews that are going on, there are so many of them. Uh, not so bad here for us in Canterbury, but across our, our counterparts in the North Island, is review fatigue and it's taking its toll on um, emergency management counterparts through the rest of the country. So if you're talking with other chief executives or mayors in the North Island in particular, you know, maybe acknowledge the, the, the fatigue that's out there. Um, South Island conference, seating conference is chugging along. Um, we've got Tapai booked for the 12th and 13th of September. Uh, we'll be making invites to Canterbury uh, 
staff and, and, and to you people to attend, um, if you wish, um, very, very shortly. Um, we've ended up with some very good speakers coming to it, uh, and, um, and the program comes out, we'll see them. And uh, yeah, and then lastly, just acknowledging uh, Minister Mark Mitchell's visit on the 13th. Um, certainly talking with Neil and John about making sure that we do get a good presentation to him, see the impact. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, um, and thanks for the report. Just wondering, the emergency management conference, I won't be able to book out two days, but is there anything in there that is around emergency management governance? Uh, and if there's not, is it something we could think about for us uh, and the role that we play in the civil defence machine? Uh, I don't think there is directly, but the theme of the conference is um, actually working together. Um, the opening in the first morning, we've got um, the director from NEMA in Australia coming. That's probably worth coming listening to. But, but let me do a bit more looking at the proper agenda and maybe I can make some recommendations from you. Thank you. And the other thing is, you mentioned the, um, I guess we, we've spoken a lot on L.8, and last meeting we had a conversation with John Price about some of the work nationally and the, the major things that they're facing and Tikarangi actually is devastating for places that are really close to it but there'll be impacts for us here in Canterbury. Just wondering, can we, has there been and will, or will there be um, further work and analysis for us to understand the impact of that event um, here locally for us? You're probably already doing that but I just haven't become aware of it through um, these meetings. Sure. Um... I think I presented or talked last time about a workshop that's available more to staff um, that Helen Jack from Environment Canterbury and one of the scientists at ECAN has put together. Um, I'll have a talk to Helen about um, a presentation that we can bring to Joint Committee on Hickorangi because yes, it does impact on Canterbury, um, particularly sort of North Canterbury and in Pegasus Bay. Um, but yes, I'll bring a future presentation to you on Hikarangi and its impact on Canterbury. John. Um, as, a, as a regular attender of national conferences when, when they happen in CDAM, um, one message I get from, from officers and volunteers is it is great to see a governor here because we don't see governors in it. I think in a lot of the areas through the country, governors sit over there somewhere and and the officers and volunteers sit and there, there is no connection. So even if there's not a lot of governance uh, involved in it, it would be great to see some of the mayors or chief executives there just being part of a conversation and being seen, um, given that feeling at times that there is a wee bit of disconnect. Probably not quite so much in Canterbury because we're better than that, but, but I know nationally there's a real challenge in governance versus staff and volunteers and workers. So any opportunity just to be there and, and support would be great. Um, just on that, um, I've noted it in my diary. Will there be an invite that comes out to members to be there? You mean councillors as well, or just mayors? I'll, 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 I'll push it out to the joint committee and then allow you to sort of forward that on if you feel. feel. Yeah. The, um, this, this is probably worth noting we're limited to about 200. 20 people just due to the size of the room. Um, so I'll have to work out how we sort of manage extra people coming in, um, but I'm sure we will work something out. That would be good if there's tenants, of course. Um, the portal's fired, James. Do we ever find a cause? Besides a match? I'm not sure. I know. I think it's still being investigated. Yeah. And probably under the controllers forum and training, um, where staff couldn't attend, but it's just a message for the CEs to um, encourage their staff to be at these meetings, these um, training sessions, because that's part of it. Obviously, there could be very good reasons why they weren't, but if you're going to the trouble of putting them on, they should be attended, and um, it's part of getting ready, isn't it? Yeah, 
think I think the unfortunate timing with LTP deliberations didn't help. Um, it, it, it's yeah. been a been a task. Yes, for us all. Yeah. Yep. And um, the meeting in uh, when Mark Mitchell is coming on the thirteenth of June, if we could have as many there as possible to meet the minister. Um, and that Zoom meeting next week, I've got that logged in for seventh on nine a.m. on it. <clears throat> Any further questions? Recommendation that we receive the report. So we'd like to move it. John, Sunkel, Sam Borton. All favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Okay. Next item be the uh, report from the committee chair, and here's an opportunity for you to raise any matters you would like to raise for next meeting. Finish. Uh, well, I'm just looking for an opportunity. I, I'm just um, in the budget. There's a couple of things here about this. Sure, it is. Yes, specific group. I see here there's uh, some money for mine rescue services. Responders. Uh, there is $200 million flood structure upgrade given the application has been for central funding of the but, um, a little bit. Uh, and I see there's uh, over $100 million for GANET and National Seismic Head. So there is some uh, it's a very quick may well be other things of interest to emergency management in the other things government those ones are Thank, thanks for that for yes good issues they're going through uh, nothing for any of that from the floor you want to raise for next meeting put on the agenda So I'll move that we receive the Mayor's report. Basic. Second at the end. Vote for it, vote this aye. Eric. Go in. I asked him. Again. Um, next meeting will be held on the Thursday, the 29th of August, and I presume it'll be back in the right um, and I'll even collect closing. Thank you, Clint. I've got a tato. I'll fuck a copy to a tato who we are a karaki tene. Um, Unihia, Unihia, Unihia Kituru Tapu Nui, Kiawatia, Kiamama, Tengako, Te Tinana, Te Wairu, Etiara Takata, Koyera, Rungo, Akairia, Kiki Runga, Kiatena, Huye, Taikia. Kia ora tato.